The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 61, Nasdaq's up 12. S&Ps are up two and a half. Gold, gold's down $20.90 at $14.90 an ounce. They are slamming gold as well as silver. Silver's down $0.39, cents, $17.67. Light sweet crude up $0.63, cents, $57.17 a barrel. Notes and bonds, you get the 10-year down 21 six, 128.29. The 30-year off a point and a half at 157.28. They both are going after their September 13th swing lows. We'll see whether they want to bust those uh, through. And King Dollar, King Dollar up 426. Uh, that was up uh, 367 yesterday, so that's catching a bid. 97,924. The euro is at 110. The yen is at 109, and the pound is at 128 to one U.S. dollar. So, a uh, little action out here this morning, right? Oh, it doesn't stop, man. Just even at 10 o'clock when I came on the air, right? We got the ISM non-manufacturing, that beating estimates. So, you got a little bit of a pop in the market um as that happened for yes. sure but everything going on for sure and some of the higher volume equities we got, we got some big names out here today uh bought with chesapeake energy they were there they basically uh filed uh, one of the files of the sec saying that they think uh well that they uh are gonna have a hard time to be go going ex concern uh in the future so uh it's always it's, it was trading 156 anyway it's down yeah. 20 cents yeah 136. Uh, Uber. Let's go take a look at Uber. So yeah. uh, they lost a billion dollars, right? They lost. Is that what they lost? I believe so. <laughs> so let's take a look. So you got Uber. The low is twenty eight thirty one, and uh, we hit twenty eight forty two today. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, it's at twenty nine dollars. This thing. What was it? Forty five went. To Pull up that issue. I'm curious public, myself. Uh, it might have been higher. Yeah. 45, okay. Yeah, well, I think what might have, uh, that's right. That's the one that just printed at 45. Lyft was the Lyft was the one that yeah. uh, traded out, higher initially because yeah, they were the first IPO of the two. Exactly. The market woke up by the time Uber pushed exactly. their shares out. And, you know, <laughs> let's see. So there's some numbers. They, they had seen a loss for the year of uh, 3 billion to 3.2. And yeah. now they see 2.8 to 2.9. Yeah, big numbers, man. There's no doubt. Gross bookings, third quarter gross booking, 16.5 billion. It's a big number, right? That's for sure. Um, Uber Eats bookings, they had seen 3.89. Now they're at 3.66. Okay. Ride sharing bookings, they were estimate 12.51 or 12.55. Yeah. That's a big miss on the Uber Eats, man. It I mean, is. That's, that's, that's almost... You know, $250 million over 90 days that they missed there. Right. And so I wonder who is coming into them. Yeah, DoorDash, Grubhub. Yeah. Um, I've, I've used DoorDash a, a, a few well, more times a case. Than, um, yeah, than Uber. Oh, I know. That's right, because I don't have an Uber account. <laughs> yeah. Not quite a uh, fair comparison. Oh, my God. We'll just laugh that one yeah, away. Yeah, no doubt. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Kevin Hinks at TD Ameritrade Tra Think or Swim. And don't forget, folks, every trading day right here, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, you want to understand option, option strategies, futures, great program every trading day. Kevin Hinks, what's going on? Hello, Tom O'Brien. Hello, Tommy O'Brien. How's everything going? Morning, Kevin. Great, great to hear from you, man. And uh, you know, it's good to be heard from. That, that's a beautiful thing. That's right, man. And needless to say, you know, this market. I mean, you know, that you had that ISM number come out this morning. Yeah. Um, you know, we just went red. What happened, man? It, it, we're going red, but the bottom line was a great number, man. Yeah, it was. I mean, that's that's a that's a big that's a that's a good number. Non-manufacturing, beating right. estimates, right. growth. Yeah. Right. You know, guys, so much of the discussion for the last month in this economy has been, well, the consumer's healthy, but manufacturing is dropping off, right? Yep. And, people are, and, and, the, and people are starting to hesitate 
on future plans for the economy. Well, it, you know, I think the GDP number, I think the payroll number that came out last week, both of those said that the U.S. consumer is still there and strong. And something's got to snap back, right? When, when the U.S. keeps consuming and we stop ma- manufacturing or slow down manufacturing, that's a divergence. Yes. And something has to snap back. So these numbers coming in at nice, healthy beats and ISM non-manufacturing, uh, you know, that means that the pipeline is, you know, the, these are, we're in the, I think, the middle of a pretty nice, strong relief rally here. You can see it in the bond market. You can see it in the gold market. And, and I think people are starting to look at this economy in a different light. Yeah, than they no. did just 30 or 60 days ago. Yeah. I, I think, you know, like, not digging into the numbers big, but every time that, you know, they were saying that, okay, that there's some bad numbers coming in, I say, everywhere I look at, like, you know, people have jobs and they're working. And, and right. I, I don't believe that people are over their head in debt. I mean, I just don't see it. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, credit cards are credit cards. The school loan deals is a big deal. But other than that, it's not. this is certainly not like... It was in 2005 and six that, you know, people were hawking their houses to get a boat. I mean, we're sure. not even close to that. Do you know what I mean? Right. And there's so many good things going on with this economy. Number one, the middle class has more money in their pocket via tax cuts, via lower gas prices. Those are all just disposable income in people's pockets. I mean, the Red Book number this morning, which, you know, that gauges that weekly increase in uh, chain store sales and malls and things like that, up 5.5%. Yeah. So the U.S. consumer is still out there and, and going. And now we're going into Christmas holiday yeah. season with a potential – for a partial trade deal about to be signed. I thought the, the news on the trade deal this morning tells me when I read between those lines that we're getting into the minutia of this trade deal and they're about to sign it. Yeah, and we're at the time of the year that you're going to spend money whether you want to spend money or not. <laughs> you better have exactly. those presents ready. Right. Santa's coming. Let's go. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So I think, you know, as long as this market is getting to a point now, guys, where good news is good news, and I'm not even sure bad news is bad news. Bad news might be good news, but these bonds are telling us something. Yeah. This is a pretty two-day, you know, harsh sell-off in the bonds. And, and although gold didn't participate yesterday, it sure is participating today. What does that mean when you get lower bonds and higher yields? Bank stocks, financials are all higher. Utilities and real estate are all lower. Yeah, and, you know, this uh, what the bonds are doing, folks. They're going after the September 13th swing area. So we'll see how that shakes out. That's 128.16 and the 10, and we're at 128.27. Yeah. Um, you know, you you brought up something that I think is is really we get so used to it now. Oil. I mean, these yeah. oil prices have stayed low for a long period of time for all of us right now, which is really cool because every. I mean, that's something that we do at least once a week. Can't avoid the gas pumps. No, you man. can't. Yeah. Right, and yeah. that's a, and that is. You know, I think personally, my view on on lower crude oil prices is that's inflationary because that's more spending money in your pocket each week. Yeah. If you're, you know, the difference between two dollars and thirty cents a gallon or two forty and three dollars, that's a significant amount of money it's, in your pocket every it's, month. It's every week, like you say. It, it really yeah. is. It's, it's every exactly. week. No doubt. Well, folks, right here, forty-five minutes from now, outstanding program, Kevin. We look forward to the program, 45 minutes. You have a great one, a safe one. Great talking to you guys. Thanks for having me on. You too, Kevin. Thanks, man. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. 
Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 26. NASDAQ is down 2. S&Ps are uh, also off 2. And um, let's go take a look at some of the... Uh, this, <laughs> there's a couple of these equities uh, that uh, are just really getting toasted out here. Um, Besides one, Uber. Yeah, be, uh, one of the biotechs out here. I saw it. It looks like it's down about 50%. Um, there you go. Myriad, number 12. Look yeah. at this thing. So what happened here? So uh, it's you, only 35%, man. Yeah, I say it sarcastically. That's pretty intense. It sure so, is. Those biotechs, man. My let's, goodness. Let's see. This is they develop market uh, molecular diagnostic products to provide physicians with information to help guide the care of patients, prevent diseases. Yeah. Um, bottom line is this. Uh, yeah. So they work to detect uh, which diseases folks might develop based on their genes. Oh. So a genetic testing. Okay. Um, okay. So let's, but let's see how that testing is faring, right? Let's see what they say. So, so something's happening, yeah. Oh, earnings. Boom. Okay. Let's see what they got going on here. It's quite a haircut, man. Oh, boy. Yeah. Let's see. They got price targets all over the place. So this is going to be their analyst. Let me just jump back here and select the second one. Earnings per share view misses low estimate. Here we go. So, wow. Fiscal year adjusted. Now they're looking at a buck to buck 10. They had seen a buck 80 to a buck 90. Okay. Makes sense. Um, for the quarter, they came in at 30. That's the second quarter, so looking. That's forward guidance, 30 to 32. They were looking for 47. Revenue-wise, pretty close to in line. You know, they only missed yeah. 210 to 212, so it looks like they're just missing. And then fiscal year revenue, 8 to 810. They were looking at 865 to 875. And, yeah, the first quarter, they just missed huge in terms of $0.08. Cents. Last year, they made 43. The estimate was 33. So let's take a look at this baby. That is one hit, man. Um... Oh, okay. my goodness. You want some volatility? This is the second gap. Oh, this could be trouble in paradise. Look at that. Whoa. Okay. So oh, so what we're looking at, folks, okay, is that there's a gap. Uh, let's see. That would be August, August of last year. No, this, this year. Yeah. Whew. So this is... Uh, yeah, what that, what that's, happened there, that's man? Probably, that's probably the last earnings. Well, no, I, the only reason I'd say is because they, they have a, 
almost a gap positive in the early August. So yeah, they went somehow from, they went from 28 to 46. That's August a, that, 1st. That's a daily, too. Yep, August 1st. And oh then God. didn't last long. Within two weeks, August 14th, you open back up, and then you're traded down to a low of 22 bucks. Right. And which then, you're now under. And then... Well, yeah, the bottom of the consolidation is 18. There's no reason I can't go to 18. MYGN, can I jump over? So this is why we'll give our sponsors, Think or Swim, a quick plug, man, because you got to love on their charts. You can see exactly where everything is, right? Let's see if that correlates to, we'll put it on a daily, their earnings. And, okay, so they must had a, a promise of good things to come, but then guess what? The day they dropped was their earnings, not the day that they came out. Wow. And, uh so yeah, that drop was their last earnings, pretty remarkable. And then somehow, without earnings, you fade all the way from 22 back up to 35. I know. And then they have to tell you their numbers again. And guess what? <laughs> Reality sets in. Pretty Intense. remarkable. It is. So let's look at this note and bond market. So uh, you know, looking at this, folks. Okay, uh, bottom line is that you are coming in for a test, and you're coming in for a test with dramatically lighter volume. So it's going to be intriguing to see if, in fact, the Price holds. So you're down 19 ticks, which, you know, they're at the lows right here. You're going into 2.4 million contracts. Now, okay. we're at 1.6, so we can definitely do two. Um, and this, this is a big day out here. There's no doubt about it. Um, if we take a look at the 30 USZ9, it's the exact same type of setup. Oh, give it a, give it a second to catch up here. Uh -huh. Yeah, we might have jammed up that one screen. <laughs> the market's saying, hey. I, yeah. Let's just pull a different one over. Sometimes one of them just get caught. Let's see if this one will cooperate. Go for it. So the 30 right now has done 182,000 contracts, which is big contract volume. But I believe we're going into 400 and something. And was that, I, it was September 13th, or 12th, was that a Fed day? That, that, that date might stick out in my I'm head. I'm not, I don't, I um, yeah, I, I don't know. It might have been September you know, 30th, but it, but I don't it, know. But it, but it, it was something. What that was doing there, too, also, is that was still going into the strength, going all the way back to August. You know, so the thing held, goes topside again. It, last time we tested it, we tested with dramatically lighter volume, okay? This time, you got the heavy volume happening. Sure. Um, gold, same setup. Now, it's going to get interesting with gold because, you know, 20 bucks is a big deal. There's no doubt about that. That being said, though, your swing point is a lot lower than where we are right now. We're down 22 now We're at 1489. And this is coming. You got one swing point, 1478. I've had 486,000 contracts. Your swing actually is at 1465. Yeah. The last low is 1483. That's 353. Well, this is going to be, uh, it looks to me like it's going to be, uh, let's see, what's CRC out here? CRC. California Resource Corporation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think they're just talking about the pop it's had since that low. Over the oh, last I see. A few I days. See. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, uh, you know, oh, the, the, the IWM. So the small caps, folks, the small caps were looking to reach their high. Now, they haven't reached their high yet. Um, I, I know a couple of Tigers are thinking well, there's, there's a breakout in there, but you're going to see this is a little bit higher. You got to last six months. It's 16, 18, okay. 39. You know, it got over these, though. It got over the yeah. last two. two. Definitely. Um, Important know. area, for sure, right it, where it's it, at. It, there's no doubt, man. Yeah. This is, if we go to the IWM and we take a look at the IWM, what you're going to see is that, you know, bottom line, you got up to 160.46. I think it's 161.11 or something. One sixty one eleven. Yeah. yeah. Of uh May. May of uh twenty nineteen. Okay. And what's gonna get interesting here is this. I I want to see this hit this because what seems to happen is that you don't get you know, the small cap was 
so much further away from its highs, right? In fact, no, that's not even its highs. That's because it's still July. So that's not, I was just going to say, it's almost like a small cap's going to catch up with the rest of the market before you actually get a pullback. But that August high is not even its high because it's July. And it's a lot higher than that inside the small caps. Can we pull it up just yeah. to see it? Then? Yeah. I'm just curious how much higher as we go into this break. Because this is what is like, that, that divergence was pretty intense out here. Yeah. There we go. Yes. Look at this. 1742. 17, it's 140 points. That's a good solid 8, 9% from where we're at. Yep. I know. Yep. I know. If you have to wait for that, man. <laughs> Where's the S going to P going to be if the Russell gets up there? Exactly. Exactly. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. We have the Dow up 21, NASDAQ down 3, S&P's up 3. Come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 24. Nasdaq's down 4. S&P's are off 3.5. Let's go to Mark in Bedford, Mass. What's going on, brother? Not much. How are you guys doing? Doing great, Morning, Mark. Morning, Tommy. So, so Tom, gold sank. What's, what's up with gold? What's up with gold is selling it off. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. 
But uh, any, 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 usually that means that the, that the world has come to peace, that, uh, that everyone's going to go have uh, the last supper tonight, and uh, everyone's going to have a good time at the uh, Yale Beef and Ale. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I've, I, I'm not in the, in the camp that just because things go south, that gold goes up. I mean, we've talked about this before, man. When everything went south in 2007, gold went south, too. Do you know what I mean? So that's that's... That's not the correlation. The correlation, you know, does go over to the dollar. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. You know, the, the dollar, bottom line is... Quite the, a day. Yeah. and it's, Quite it's, a two days. Yeah. And then, well, and then let's look at the yen, too, because that means the yen is going to try to probably go after the 109 again. See, this yen's looking at... Yeah, there it is. Okay, so the number in the yen is that 109.32. We made 109.29 last week. And, you know, so, so here's my question. I was thinking this morning when I saw what gold did. I normally don't play the medals, but I was thinking of buying nugget and a bounce. OK, so let's take a look at it. Let me just let this computer catch up with me for a second. And your GT. So you, you get the nugget. The nugget, folks, is the direction daily gold minus three times levered product. So. You're twenty seven fifty four. Let's see what this is. Okay, so you're down two bucks. You get six million shares. Now I'm gonna go over to the GDX because they trade this trades off the GDX also. So the GDX is the market vectors gold mining trust. Yeah, I you know, I mean as long as you you're gonna trade it, um I'd wait a little bit longer and see if it can, it'd be great if the, G, like, see, right now the GDX, is, there's still no sellers. 16 million shares, you're coming into 82 million. So it w what would be cool, Mark, is that if it could get, just get a little bit lower. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like it's gone at all. One second. I know. So even one of the reasons that I had, when I was talking about that, yeah, gold's down $20. It's down twenty dollars, but guess what? You're not. You're still. You're not at these major swing points, you know. So, it's really to me, it's just a test. Just like, just like the um, aspect of the the bonds. If I go over to the ten year again, like when I look at this ten year, I'm still bullish on this ten year bond, man. Um, you know, fast move, no doubt, but that's what they like to do, you know. The, so. The ten years at one twenty eight twenty nine. We got to one twenty eight twenty seven, and that's at even at one twenty eight twenty seven. That'd get you eleven ticks away from the swing low. You know, we go back to the nugget. I think. I mean, if you if you're gonna basically trade this thing right now, wouldn't be a bad place to trade it and just put a stop. Uh, you know, under the low out here today. All right, I think about that. So you get yeah. So right. let, let's look at the two largest. So the the two largest weightings inside there is going to be Newmont. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Look at that. They really smoke Newmont, but the the K. That's interesting. So ooh, Newmont just went from thirty eight ninety six to thirty six sixty four. Yeah. And then Barrick. You know, Barrick's under a low, but there's not selling, and so Newmont's the move. Can we go into the news on Newmont and just yeah. see if there's something? Because that is volatility, That's, even on a day where gold's down intense. $20. Yeah, exactly. So, cuts their fiscal year, gold production. Yeah. There you go. So, they're dealing with some woes as well. Right. So, here's my $75,000 question, which I asked you a month ago, Tom. Are you, I know you're bearish on the market and bullish on gold. Anyone who has listened to Tom O'Brien for the last year should know those two rules anyway. But are you more bearish on the market or more bullish on gold? I'm more bullish, bullish on gold. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In a big right. way. In a big way. Yeah. And that has to do, I, it has to do with the aspect that you know, you, we get the dollar at highs, the euros at lows, the pounds at lows, the yen basically is in the middle. But my take is that the, the euro is going to go higher, the pound's going to go higher, 
And then if it's a fundamental deal, like let's go back to the aspect that how many tons of dirt it takes to get an ounce of gold. And I like that positioning, you know, and the positioning of the central banks, the central banks keep buying hand over fist. They buy, they're buying more than the retailer buying. So it's like, okay, man, you know, we all keep wondering why they, you know, even our own fed goes down on rates when we're at all time highs. Well, you know, I don't have the answer to that, but I don't think anyone else does either. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We'll see if they're right in the next year, right? <laughs> yeah, because it's like, okay, you know, it, it's kind of, this is kind of an interesting article. So look, so look at this, Paul Tudor Jones, okay, which is, he's a, you know, an iconic, you know, inside the trading business. He's saying out here this morning that he's never seen in his trading career, um, like I said, so Paul Tudor Jones, the billionaire hedge fund manager said, Efforts to simulate global economies are both in equities in a way he's never seen before. I think he's right. You know what I mean? It's, you know, there's, there's not, there used to always be a mantra that you knew that the Fed was going to take the punch bowl away at some particular point because the cost of money, right? But it seems now that, you know, just like people, you know, eight years ago were worrying about a deficit, now people don't worry, you know, I don't know if they don't worry about a deficit, they don't talk about a deficit, you know, and in, in the aspect of taking the punch bowl away, that's like a heresy saying that, you know, they, they're going to stop sure. any economy from going forward. So, the interesting part there. So he's with um, Ray Dalio yeah. at the Greenwich Economic Forum in Connecticut. Dalio said that another effect of the low rates is that investors are more willing to listen to companies selling ambitions rather than making a profit. Quote, unquote, because the world is looking for a yield or something, companies also can sell dreams rather than earnings. I believe this is Dalio saying. So the number of companies that produce earnings is the lowest since the dot-com bubble in terms of their need because you can sell the dream. That's that's pretty interesting, too. It I'm is. not sure if that's as bullish as uh, Tudor Jones is No, it's not. Yeah. It's not. It's definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so hey, where time you, will tell. Where, where do you stand in the metals market, Mark? What do you think? I'm, I'm not in it. I usually, like I said in the beginning of the call, I usually don't. Um, I see. Play, play, play in the um, play in the metals. You know, I usually just do the equities. Yeah. But with the drop in gold today, I I got curious. Okay. About nugget. So yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I said, hmm, maybe this is a, an opportunity to pick up not a lot, you know, just a little. Yeah, $23 is a big move to the downside, man. Yeah. You start reaching those, uh, you know, one-time, two-time average standard deviation of a move, yeah. and you might get a bounce even if. Yeah, because it's exactly. Yeah. It's really... All right, well, I'll, I'll watch it for the next day and see if it comes out of another couple of pennies. Thanks, guys. Cool, Thanks, man. Mark. Have a great one, man. Have Take care, man. One. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com 
and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 19, Nasdaq's down four. S&Ps are off four and a half. And let's go take a look at this uh, rate structure. Yeah, pretty interesting as they're talking about uh, futures showing first fully priced in Fed cut pushed back to 2021. So traders dial back their bets on Federal Reserve easing Tuesday after a stronger than expected reading on a key services gauge. That was the ISM non-manufacturing, right? Yes. Right at 10 a.m. Fed fund futures now show a quarter point cut in the central bank benchmark not fully priced in until the beginning of 2021 on market the, on Monday the market was fully priced for such a move by October of 2020 um, and I wonder so how they three months right yeah I wonder how if this is updating or if these um, I believe they're updating they have all the time during the day for sure yeah because when I'm on the afternoon they're different than the morning I just wonder where so we're sitting right now at 1.5 to 1.75 looking at the Fed funds implied probabilities number. This is the probability that we're going to be at where we are right now. So that would be no cut whatsoever, right? The column to the left is one quarter basis cut, okay? So we have a meeting coming up December 11th, 91% chance the Fed does nothing. We have a meeting coming up in January, 74% chance they do nothing. So almost a three to one favorite, they stay, 25% yeah. chance they cut. It starts to get a little interesting when you start getting into March, April, June, July. July, the first meeting that you actually have a greater than 50% chance that there will be a cut, and that is a combined, whether it's 25 basis points by then, being a 38.5% chance or a 13.1, only a 45.9% chance that you actually stay where you're at. And then when you zoom this down a little bit, when you start to get down to, here's your December, here's your January, I mean, you're looking at about a 60-40 chance that you get a cut as you get into really those September. So I wonder how they're they're pricing yeah. that in for that article. You know, it's well how to looking at this is that do you remember when we flipped from a hike to a cut? Yeah. And then the hikes are still zero, folks. Yeah. Okay. And this is the chart that you look at, right? The yeah. the probability of a hike is the white bar, and it was all but assured. Now this is for the December meeting again. The probability of a hike for the December 19, 2019 meeting was at almost like 100% chance in May. And then talk about an inversion of... That's amazing. Yeah, no change. And then we've got three cuts since then. I believe so. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah, definitely. Wow. The world changes quickly right That's, now. That is a fast change. There's, there's no two ways about that. Yeah. That is one fast change. We go take a look at the... Uh, let's go over that that oil market. So that that you had Chesapeake Energy. Well, the, Chesapeake is, I believe, it's they're, they're big in gas too. That's what that's. I I think. Yeah. Okay. So Chesapeake Energy tumbled after the U.S. natural gas producer posted a wider than expected third quarter loss and said it may not be able to continue as a going concern if depressed oil and gas prices persist. So let me just. 
what is that? C CHK CHK And what, what I read in this article, folks, so what it is, is that all these companies, of course, you know, have debt. And look at this. Chess, so Chesapeake was $69 in 2008. It was $34 in 2011. It was $29 in 2014. Yeah. And you can just see tra trails away. Definitely. So what happens here is that they have a huge amount of debt and... That going concern, though, is that let's say that you're the bank and you're lending me the money. Well, there's parameters on it that, you know, you have to have taken in so much money. It, sure. It, the bottom line is that they're outside of that now. That's what's going on. Okay. So they, can, they can't keep up with what the banks want them to keep up with. So okay. that's, that's what's going on inside of that. Uh, uh, I was just looking at where they're at. I mean, three-year growth, right? Big problems. And look at it from... 2015, even revenue, it makes sense, gas prices. 12.8 billion in 2015, they're now sitting at 8.6 billion in 2020, and uh, I imagine these negative numbers are the dramatic concern. If you're sitting with a boatload of debt, yep. and you're not able, and you're still losing more money, um, that's where things can get. And let's go look at natural gas right now. So, this is, a, this has been just a horrible market. For anyone that is in the natural gas business. So we're 287. Okay. And and know, the chart's taking its time. It is. And I believe, you know, we're we were almost down to the two dollar level. So there's no doubt that it, it it's come back a bit from from that level, but yeah. just like anything else, you know. Yeah, it's not cooperating. Let's see if we pull up on a different one. A lot going on in the market today as this thing trains and keeps up. Natural gas. We're going to have to give this computer a refresher, I think. Yeah, it's not, it's not cooperating. Uh, yeah. Natural gas not cooperating, period. Right? Yeah. Traders would agree with that one. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. That's pretty intense. And in general, you know, we'll, we just had the Dow go uh, south. Yeah, all the market's red. I mean, yeah. what would have happened if we got a bad uh, ISM non-manufacturing number? We got, a, we got a crushing number. Markets popped on that 10 a.m. And we've now trailed back. I mean, we were coming in with a solid gain pre-market. We get a boost with some solid fundamental numbers at 10 a.m. Yeah. And we're negative for the day. Yeah, it's going to be really intriguing to see whether these bonds can move as well as gold, meaning, you know, reject lower price out here. Because in both cases, folks, you haven't hit the, the, the lowest swing point yet. And, you know, gold uh, hit 1486, you're at 1489. You know, no, there's certainly not a bounce yet. But bottom line is that uh, we'll see how this shakes out in the next few hours. Yeah. You know. Because we, window dressing is over. I mean, but the way that the market was even trading this morning, I'm saying to myself, it's going to be a market that wants to go up three or four points every day for a while. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, maybe not so much, though, man. We're now at S&Ps. We're 15 points off the highs that we had almost, I think, in the, uh, in the futures. And that's a big number. Yeah. It's particularly a big number because what happens is that when you do go on a straight, uh, on a trend like we have every day, like slightly higher, slightly higher, slightly higher. Sure. You can see people that will pile on, and then all of a sudden, oh, what do you mean? How do we turn red? Well, especially when there was no news to push it red. I right. mean, we got, yeah, the high 3,085.75, so yeah. we're almost 15 points off that high. And if you drill things down, man, I mean, look at that 10 a.m. pop. Yeah. That we got up to back to 3,082, and by the end of the bar, we we're near 3,075. We're now five points below that level. So you could see that fade throughout the day if that's the beginning of a little bit of a slide on uh, selling, selling the news, right? Yep. And you know it's going to come out tomorrow, folks, in Japan. It's going to be uh, SoftBank. Oh, oh. Tomorrow's Wednesday, right? It sure is. Yeah. So Wednesday. Oh, so we'll know it tomorrow. It's because it's tonight. 
Okay. Wednesday tonight in Japan. So yes. that that number comes out tonight. This okay. Is, yeah, market's going to be waiting to see. Okay. How much of a write down does he have to take? They're going to have to mark it, right? Right. If they, right. If they yes. put that money into WeWork, right. eight billion bucks. Right. There it is. Stay right there, folks. Tom and I are coming right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so we got McDonald's. They got a new CEO. And this is an interesting story here. I mean, the guy's only been there since 2015, so I wouldn't expect him to have a huge amount of shares. But he sold all his shares uh, in May. Uh, so in May... Uh, yeah, he sold his entire stake in May that he accumulated since he started at McDonald's in 2015, roughly 10,900 shares. He also exercised almost 27,900 options and liquidated that holding transactions netted him 4.44 million dollars before taxes um pretty interesting stuff you it's, know and it's it was completely unforeseen so that's part of the reason why that they have somebody at the helm that doesn't have that i'm not sure if they'll put in a contract that maybe gives him a better vested interest in the price of the shares as they usually try to yes, do right um but nonetheless as of right now no shares for the ceo of the and biggest may, uh, i'm trying to oh there's so there's may right there may or 200 yeah, we're at 189 right now. Okay. I mean, you can see, though, I mean, when he comes, right, I mean, you know, just to back it up a little oh, bit yeah, further, doubled, doubled. that's what, yeah, I yeah. mean, you know, $4.45 million, I mean, that's, that's most of the time enough 
money to live off wealthy for the rest of your life. Yes. And so, you know, no, you, I, you cash in, man, and you still enjoy your job, you make a living, you, you know, you use your future earnings, and, and no matter what happens, nobody can take that money away right. from you, man. No, no, I, I can see yeah. it. I and maybe see. he thought it was time to diversify away from McDonald's, which would be interesting in light of the fact that he just got put at the helm. Now he's going to have to. Because if he really believed that it was in a good position to trade higher, no need to do that, man. You could always borrow against that position or something like That's that right. if you wanted That's to. Right. So. And he only, he, only, he only missed the high. I mean, if it's 189, the high is two something. You can't go wrong when you're no. getting those positions right. at 100. He's still making a very healthy yeah. salary, I'm sure, right. on top of that. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. we got the Thicker Swim coming up next. I'm Mr. Kevin Hinks. Then Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bell. Thanks, man. Oh, yeah! Go get him, folks.